Airing first on Asheville FM, WSFMLP 103.3 in Asheville, North Carolina, this is The Final Straw, a weekly anarchist and anti-authoritarian broadcast and podcast emanating out of occupied Jalagi land in southern Appalachia. We bring you voices from struggles for liberation from all around the world. Welcome. This week I spoke with Liaison Wakest. Liaison grew up in an anarchist commune in rural America. They can be found climbing into dumpsters from Mexico to Kazakhstan, looking for trash to make art with. In recent years, they have been focused on research into ethical technology and infrastructural anarchism. For the hour, we speak about the interoperable open source ensemble of federated online publishing servers and platforms known as the Fediverse, and its most popular component, Mastodon. This conversation takes place in the context of media hullabaloo about Elon Musk seeking to purchase Twitter, the paradigm in which a rich egomaniac can own the addictive social media platforms over which so much social and political life is engaged, and what positives we can draw from alternatives like Mastodon and the Fediverse. You can find Liaison's Mastodon, uh, which is an analog to Twitter, at Liaison, L-I-A-I-Z-O-N, at social.wake.st. You can follow our project on Mastodon by finding at the Final Straw Radio at chaos.social or by visiting chaos.social forward slash at the Final Straw Radio in a web browser. Another interesting anarchist media project engaging in the Fediverse is Collectiva, which has a peer tube instance at collectiva.media, uh, which is an analog to YouTube, as well as on Mastodon collectiva.social, where they're welcoming new users. So if you're looking for a place to start, that could be um, a good place to get an account. Collectiva includes participation from groups such as sub.media and antimedia. Also, I cannot recommend enough the interview by our comrades at From Embers, another member of the Channel Zero Network, with the host of a Fediverse Mastodon instance, based in so-called Canada. The interview was broadcast on February 3rd, 2022. It's entitled Social Networks, Online Life, and the Fediverse. So it's another like parallel conversation to, to this one that we're having. But I really enjoyed it and got a lot of it, and I think that y'all will too. And check out other shows by from members. They're a great project. In a quick update to the situation of Eric King, he's been transferred this week from USP Atlanta to USP Lee, where he and his supporters are concerned that he'll be placed in the solitary and isolated for attack. You can find info on the situation as well as who to contact in order to press for his return to a medium security facility to match his current security points by visiting supporteric.king.org and finding the May 3rd, 2022 post whose title starts, Eric Transferred. And you can also find um, updates to Eric's situation on a bunch of the social media platforms out there. Yeah, if you could introduce yourself with whatever name, um, prefer gender pronouns, location, or projects that you're involved with that might set context for the audience for this conversation, I'd appreciate it. Cool. My name's Liaison Wakest. Oh, I'm involved in too many projects, Steve. I don't even know where to, where to start in that space, but... I am from a commune in Wisconsin that I, I grew up on and was there uh, for the first large part of my life. So I'm sort of like a second generation freak. Nice. <laughs> the the commune that I grew up at uh, was sort of involved in a lot of like our, our two main points were hypermedia and permaculture. And so sort of like the convergence of uh, plant stuff and weird tech stuff and art thinking of thinking of life as uh, performance art let's see i uh currently live in new orleans i've been been out here for uh about eight years now and i'm currently working on building a tree house <laughs> nice which is a very different type of thing than um doing weird anarcho tech stuff when you did you say hydromedia or hypermedia? Hyper hypermedia. Oh, okay. What do you mean by hypermedia, or what did the commune mean by that? Like the H from HTML also is is uh, hyper. So uh, hypermedia was a was a early term that sort of like fell out of vogue in the nineties. But um, it's sort of the idea that you break down all the walls between different types of creation 
and so everything is all all art forms and all creation are are one and in in the world of when you start integrating sort of new technologies that enable new types of uh creation um those those walls start breaking down and you can um just sort of think of think of life as life as art and life as creation but like i mean especially like like hypertext and sort of the idea of of hypertext and of the internet uh sort of came from some of the same rhetoric in in the sense of like breaking down the linearity of of the different types of media yeah i guess it means like it means more than text in some ways right because suddenly you can embed links to other texts and go down this weird rabbit hole that you wouldn't have been able to with a necessarily a, like linear published pamphlet or or book Is that sort of in 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 the in the in the sense of hypertext but then in hi- in hypermedia it's like it's everything it's it's audio and and video and interactive stuff and uh you know um a noise show like it, it, it's, it's sort of it's sort of like the 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 term that is meant to embrace all creation so we were going to speak about uh an, an like anarchistic tech tech stuff and i guess yeah hyper communication i guess like social media is what um i was hoping to speak with you about yeah so Recently, like a big thing in the news, and we've been talking about having this conversation well before this hit the news, but this is just one specific like set of ripples in the pond. Elon Musk is talking about purchasing, like getting control over and going private with Twitter. But I think that like, and I think that there's, there's, a, there's a lot there. We can talk about the, the sort of role that non-legacy media and in in particular, like social media has played in in or plays in the political landscape, both in terms of government surveillance, corporate surveillance, more than both, but like in terms of government surveillance, corporate surveillance, in terms of the way that government functioned in the last administration, quite literally, where presidential edicts were coming down via Twitter posts. So I think a thing that the media does is to focus on an individual like Musk. And um, all of the companies that he's owned or the statements that he makes on, on in the media or on social media or whatever. And that becomes a story. And I think really the story that I want to get at and I'd love to hear your comments on is more about the fact that someone can decide to um, take this thing that has such big political consequences and insert their ego into it and control what happens in it in a way that's consequential to politics and sociality um in our society so i wonder if you have any sort of like comments about the sort of like yeah the implications of that yeah no i mean i I have lots of lots of thoughts on the matter for sure i i think that in the long run this will probably be a good thing because it puts more of a spotlight on how how weak this system is that we have the system of all of the news sources, news sources and mainstream uh, like media sources and social media and these internet companies, all being these trading blocks between a handful of billionaires, and the more people realize how f- how messed up that is, maybe the more visibility sort of the alternative ways of organizing this stuff can have. So. You know, after this happens, we've gotten about uh, maybe almost two hundred thousand new uh, people signing up on the Fediverse um, in the last like week. Um, from people being like, "Oh fuck no, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be a a pawn in Musk's uh, game. Um, I need to find an alternative." Uh, it, it sort of seems like any time something like this happens it it sort of pushes more people to look for alternative infrastructure and in you know in a lot of ways like whether twitter is owned by a bunch of venture capitalist stakeholder companies or some billionaires like it's still it's still a 
it's still a giant ad machine either way. And there's still like a few people who have all the power. So in the long run, I don't think that Elon theoretically like owning it really makes that much difference. Though I guess that that might be a little bit of the accelerationist take or something like it's okay for something to get worse, slightly worse, if it pushes the future probabilities uh, closer to actualization or something. Yeah, I definitely want to get into a bit about what the Fediverse is and what are it, some of its constituents. I guess, yeah, can you can you talk a little bit before we go into the specifics of that of like, yeah, what sort of benefits there are? Like, what what benefits do you think people are going to see crossing over to the Fediverse, for instance, over what they would be experiencing on um, on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter. Well, there's there's a lot of different angles to 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 go at it uh, to answer that question by. But so the Fediverse is a lot of things. It's not it's it's not one platform. So like all of all of the other options that you just uh, or examples that you just laid out, other than the Fediverse are companies owned by shareholders and those companies decide exactly what happens and how it works and what it looks like and who's invited and have complete control over what their network i mean complete technical control at least over what their network how their network functions and what kind of activities can happen on it and how those things work and how how to collect money, how to exploit the people who are using it, and etc. The Fediverse... So, most people are familiar... If, if you're familiar with the Fediverse at all, you're familiar with Mastodon, which is sort of like the biggest uh, piece of software that is a part of the Fediverse. Um, but the Fediverse is much more than just that. So, Mastodon is basically... It was made as a alternative to Twitter... Uh, using an already existing protocol that has that has actually been around for about 13 years in various forms under various names. Um, so the, the, the Fediverse actually started about 13 years ago. And it, it originally started as an alternative to a very early Twitter. And, you know, 13 years ago, Twitter was a very different thing than it is today. But um, there was sort of an explosion of this idea of microblogging, and Twitter was not not the only one to do that. There was a there was a bunch of projects and companies and people who realized that sort of one of the stumbling blocks of blogging, which at the time was like one of the biggest parts of the internet, was that it's so structured that people you there's there's sort of this this stumbling block in um, finishing something before you publish it. And by removing the assumption that you need to publish articles as opposed to sort of like snippets and thoughts and little blobs, you remove this this thing to be scared by, which enables um, a lot more activity and a lot of different interactions that w- weren't intended in the blogging space um, when people were designing blogging software. So the Fediverse, in its current state, is many, many different pieces of software that all use a a common protocol, which is called ActivityPub. And ActivityPub basically just lays out how messages and data are shared between distinct servers. And the Fediverse is made up of about 6,000 servers right now, all run by in- different individuals around the world, and all with their own codes of conduct, with their own policies, with their own uh, ideologies, their own politics, and all of those servers have the ability through this protocol called ActivityPub to talk to each other, and all of the sort of types of interactions that you would expect in social media are able to be relayed in a sort of standard way that any developer can then implement in whatever sort of code and stack that they want to use to be able to share this standard way of communicating packets of data between servers. And so 
Yeah, Mastodon being the the biggest one or the, the, the sort of biggest piece of software that is being used. Um, but there's many, many other different pieces of software that are also part of the Fediverse and are also using this same standard. So there's PeerTube, which is probably the second biggest, and that's sort of for video sharing, sort of as a, a project specifically to combat YouTube. It's also um, sort of anarcho-infrastructure-minded in its formulation. So all of the Fediverse is, is open source, and there's almost no companies involved in the Fediverse. Now there's, there's a few little ones that people have sort of started to support themselves working on it full time but it, in general there's there's almost no it, it's almost all individuals working on it um out of out of passion and out of um care for the future of uh communication so yeah so there's uh, mastodon being sort of like the twitter equivalent peer tube being sort of like the youtube equivalent there's one called write freely which is uh for sort of more long-form blogging. There's a new one that started uh, pretty recently called Bookworm, uh, worm spelled with a Y. That's for sort of logging and sharing your what you're reading and um, updates about... Like Goodreads, sort of? Yeah, yeah, it's like like Goodreads or library thing, um, but it's also, it's also federated, so oh, I guess I should explain what, what federation is. So all of the Fediverse and... The, the, the Fedi part of Fediverse, it's Federated Universe, Fediverse is... So, a, a federated network, and the, the analogy that most people use is that, and sort of most familiar is email is a federated network design. So, any email address can email any other email address, and the servers don't need to first know about each other. So, in email, anyone can start a new server, you know... Uh, fluffy cats at mouse.net and that can by default using the protocol of email send a message to any other already existing email account in the world um, and so people don't even really think about that inherent difference between email and modern social media like the mainstream social media today everyone's existing on one server yeah, so Basically, Twitter is just one gigantic computer that is sharing messages on itself, whereas email is, again, like thousands of computers that can all, or actually millions, that have paths between them and can share messages using a federated protocol, which in, in email's case is, um, I guess, SMTP. Uh, so the Fediverse is basically that same model, but sort of updated for the kinds of interactions that we expect in the modern interaction on on social media. So things like liking and replying and boosting and sharing and following, uh, those are all sort of like activities that one would expect in the case of social media, but everyone has grown accustomed to, you know, if you're on Instagram, you can only follow other people on Instagram, where... On the Fediverse, you can follow anyone using any different kind of platform, and the data all sort of gets into your local stream of whatever you're, um, whatever you're using. I guess there's one potential benefit to draw out of that in that because of the federated model there and anyone being able to start a server if they have the resources available to them, that leads to the creation of a you know, a lot of different potentially spaces where it's allowable to have certain kinds of speech that maybe you would be excluded from Twitter or Instagram or Facebook for for doing. So like, you know, to, to, to continue as we do with the, um, the example of like anarchists, anarchists can talk about radical alternatives to the state, can talk about attacks that occur against infrastructure or prison breaks without a fear that they're going to get shut down directly necessarily by the the host of their you know of their specific platform on the fediverse unless it counters the terms of service that are agreed to or the social contract or whatever of that thing so that well, that could be a positive so as, right and in, in the fediverse you can you can host everything yourself uh so if you're you know if you're running an anarch anarchist instance and you want to host 100 percent of your instance 
you know, you can you can you can get a used server for a hundred bucks on Craigslist and plug it into the wall in a in a basement and run a Fediverse server with a thousand people on it with really not that much I mean it it's not it's definitely work, but it's like not that complicated. And there's a lot of people who are actually able and willing and currently doing things like that, which hasn't been possible in in previous times for what we expect. I mean, I guess it's it's been possible in the sense of collectives running running email or running um, chat servers in the past, but this is sort of like a, a new uh, leaf in that ability because it's um, you can have a very public presence and a very interactive presence through infrastructure that you entirely manage yourself if you if you do have the there there's definitely technical know-how but there's there's enough people around who who do have that that know-how and and the um excitement to to do that so there like there's a lot of collectives who are there's there's an anarchist collective uh in um in italy i can't, I can't think of their name off the top of my head right now but um how does Dici? who hosts snow blogs uh that's they're connected, but that's not who I was thinking of. But they they run a bunch of Fediverse stuff out of a out of a squat, using all found and collected infrastructure. And yeah, they, I think they probably have about a thousand people using using their uh, their server. So it's 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 not just an analogy; it's it's actually very um, the the ability to do that is is currently there. So that's like definitely a positive. You know, I could, I could, if that is something that you are seeking, is to have the ability to have a space that dedicated to the kind of interactions that you want to have. And you can run it yourself, and you can look at the code, and you can, or have someone you trust, hopefully, uh, running the code and, and keeping up on it. But then also, I think that there's another side to a benefit that someone as a user could have of being on one of these because it, it because it's open source, you basically know the information that's being collected about the users and in in there's a lot more transparency than there would be f- and it's easier to find out than for instance with twitter or with instagram or with facebook and with that data being collected it seems easier to release information that people th- had the presumption of being private or didn't even know that was being collected about them when those companies get hacked or if they sell that data to someone else is that is that like a, a sort of fear that people engaging with the Fediverse should have about their data if they're starting accounts on things like Mastodon? Or is it just a thing that they'll be more aware of because there's not the profit motive there? I mean, I guess that's a, that's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole discussion in itself. I guess if, if you're, the Fediverse is mostly public people posting stuff publicly. Um, I'm, there, there are different modes, so you can post uh, you know, there are private messages and there's, uh, sort of limited visibility kinds of messages. But I would say in general, data collection on a large scale is in, unless you're running. So if we're using advanced encryption, your data is probably getting collected nonetheless, somewhere down the pipeline whether or not it's sort of in a format that's usable by anyone <laughs> a lot of it it just gets hoarded but um i think if if something is publicly visible on the internet someone's collecting it sort of no matter what so the the fediverse is very different than something like than something like signal in the sense that most of the stuff on the fediverse is is people talking to each other sort of uh publicly though it doesn't it doesn't intrinsically need to be like that and there's there's a bunch of people working on building uh sort of advanced encryption into into the fediverse right now but that has been somewhat of an afterthought and something that has been um very difficult to tack on later because it was sort of not it the fediverse was entirely designed around sort of uh, 
public facing content and the the security privacy part of it came sort of later but the idea you know like thinking about what what you mean when you say security and privacy the the ability to control your control that your data is available is sort of a separate issue and control who has the ability to silence you and who has the ability to uh, limit your visibility. They're very connected topics to privacy and security, but they're not, they're not the first things that people think about. Well, then I guess another issue too that I'd like to ask about is another thing that I could see as being a benefit to something that is a parallel or autonomous infrastructure like the Fediverse is that these privately held social media corporations have designed algorithms to the way that people interact with their platforms that are meant to draw people and keep people not just based on them wanting to read the content or look at the picture in and of itself, but making um, things addictive. Ref- yeah, refresh rates or um, populating certain kinds of content at different times. Is that, a, is that a thing that people could expect to engage with at this point in Fediverse platforms? Um, so I would say right now on the Fediverse, there is no sorting whatsoever and no sort of algorithmic decision making of what you see. Everything is um, chronological. Chronological, yeah. Um, on, per, I think every every different piece of software on the Fediverse, I think is all currently chronological um, in in what you get. Um, there's some, Mastodon just launched a explore, some kind of explore tab, which I think is using um, some ranking of sort of popularity of posts in a, in a specific time frame. But I think each individual server that's running the software gets to decide how their ra- their posts are being ranked or um, like whether to turn that on locally or not. And the algorithm, I mean, everything is open source, so you can see exactly what those, uh, what those ranking algorithms would be doing. And that's just like a way of discovering content because in the Fediverse, when there's nothing being pushed at you, like when you sign up for an account, you you basically start fresh and everything is blank and you don't get it's not like here follow follow Elon Musk <laughs> which fucking twitter dot like still today like i get like a notification if i if i open twitter on an account will still be like here follow Elon Musk would you like to follow Elon Musk i've had the same account like reminded like five times if i want to follow it's really bizarre and it's just like, you know, it's this... It's po- like Tom from MySpace. Yeah, it's just, it's just this popula- just it's a popularity hovering. game of... If someone is getting super... A lot of interaction, then the system just keeps pushing that. So yeah, that, that, that kind of interaction isn't on the Fediverse at all now. But there are some very valid reasons for, for some kind of algorithmic sorting of posts that you want to see in the sense that if you're following a lot of people, it gets overwhelming very fast, and you, your ability to look at everything becomes less and less the more sort of stuff you're trying to consume. And so, I think uh, eventually there will be there will be the need and the willingness to do to to build in some kind of mechanisms for that in the Fediverse. And the main difference being that it will be entirely open and and sort of customizable by the person who's who's getting that. So I, th- I think, you know, probably in a couple of years, we'll start to see that kind of thing happen in the Fediverse. And I, the, the kinds of conversations that peop- I've seen people have are like, yeah, as long as it's entirely opt-in and you get to know exactly what those algorithms are doing and decide which ones you want to use and you're able to turn them on and off uh, personally, that changes the sort of most of the negative dynamic around it. I was curious what you had to say about, so, okay, stepping back a bit, you had mentioned that these protocols are 
interoperable between different platforms and between different, for instance, instances in the Fediverse, different servers that are running um, and have their own sort of like guidelines. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder if you have thoughts about how tools get used in unintended ways. I mean, that's like a part of hacking, right? It's just like playing with a thing, trying to break it in different ways or or make it do things you didn't expect it to do. Mm -hmm. But then open source and free software, for instance, also gets used, you know, after I think I think it was Gab. I might be wrong, but there was some sort of far right platform that was taken like the, 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 let's see, I think Cloudflare maybe stopped. Yeah. So uh, you're you're, you're talking about the Gab, the Gab situation. So Mm -hmm. yeah, just, just, I, this story got so uh, over, over reported (laughs) that I, I'm somewhat, I'm somewhat bored by it, but I, I I can, I can give a quick synopsis. Um, Gab being uh, sort of the first big, we're building a far right social media platform. They got a bunch of investment money early on, like millions of dollars. They did a very shitty job of building a sort of modern social media website and they built it with a lot of uh, assumptions that turned out to not be true. And so they quickly, you know, when when it started getting a lot of attraction and I think when, I think early on, like, there was rumors that Trump was going to move there and uh, uh, there was a bunch of sort of prominent far-right uh, figureheads who were, who were over there, like, going on about some <laughs> racist bullshit or something. And, well, the main thing is they got, they first they got kicked off of their, their main hosting, which they were able to move on to alternative hosting, but then they were kicked off of the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Their, their app was, and that put a new media spotlight on them, and then they started sort of growing more because they were getting silenced by big tech with its Californian neoliberal Elites. This is stance, stance. So wh- what they did, which it was an interesting move, was they basically scrapped all of the platform that they had built already and had spent like over a million dollars on and took software that is open source and free to use. So they, they took Mastodon, they forked it and sort of rebranded it and just launched their own Mastodon instance on their original domain and imported all of the old user accounts from their previous software as sort of like new users into into their Mastodon instance. But they did a lot of things wrong and that didn't work very well and the developers, well, so Mastodon is made sort of entirely by leftists and anarchists and, uh, you know, queer people and trans people and and people on that side of the the political spectrum and so the developers working on Gab who who took Mastodon and tried to like change it into their own thing basically just got thwarted at every attempt by most of the people working on Mastodon and so it they didn't really succeed in uh in utilizing that base very well and their reasons for doing that were quickly uh, sort of thwarted because the vast majority of of other servers on the Fediverse just instantly blocked and muted and restricted any interaction between between Gab and the rest of the Fediverse. And so e- each server gets to decide that. And of course, there's some some servers on the Fediverse who are like also run by other far right folks and trolls and people who just like shitty content and um so there there was like a, a couple sort of pools of of servers that were c- continuing to federate with them but they ended up not that long after um sort of changing their mind again and i think i think they're actually still running a a strange fork of of mastodon with with some of the original Mastodon code, but they they turned off all federation and are are not not part of the Fediverse at all now. 
little white ethno state on the internet sort of yes yeah um exactly i mean i think even even if like over overblown in the media i think it's interesting though that there is there are baked into this opportunities for like not just having to have whatever come across your way because of the um, interoperability of the servers with each other, that there are ways to decide to block content from certain directions. Because if it is like free and open source and anyone can participate in it, like there's also the right to not have to engage with certain types of content. Mm-hmm. So the fact that the it is technically interoperable between that Nazi server and what a collectiva or something like that, the fact that they can burn that bridge between them and say like, yeah, cool, you go play over there by yourself. You've got your own sandbox. You do that. I think says a lot about, I, I think that says a lot basically about the potentials of, of the platform. You don't necessarily have to deal with, you know, if you, if you want to run an instance that specifically follows Juche or something like that, you can do that. And when another, when enough or users on another instance find that obnoxious enough that they talk to the the mods there, they can say, "Can you just stop them from being able to interact with us from that?" Yep. Yeah. So instance? the the, the Fediverse, Fediverse is built in a way that is very modular. So there's lots of different levels of different types of walls you can put up between between different instances and between individuals, and um, there's sort of like every different type of every different type of wall so on an individual level you can block a uh, any other account or you can block a server from interacting with you and then on a server level each each server gets to decide one what they can you can exist on the white on the allow list or deny list model uh, so you can say, by default, I talk to everyone, or by default, I only talk to these servers, and then I need to add who I talk to later on. Or you can say, I'm open to everyone, and then if someone, uh, some server has too many bad actors on it, uh, you can silence that server, which is slightly different than blocking it, basically says none of the content from that remote server sort of shows up publicly and less sort of explicitly requested or explicitly shared so yeah any, anyway it's there's there's a lot more depth and uh, dynamicness in the types of interactions possible and i feel like it's a lot more it's a lot closer to human interaction in physical space than than what we're used to in the everyone in a everyone's in the same mall under the same mall rules of the facebooks and twitters of the world the Final Straw is a proud member of the Channel Zero Network of Anarchist Podcasts, and here's a jingle from another member of CZN. You will never, ever surrender or compromise. We occupied government buildings, we blockaded highways, and we talked about not just marching, but direct action to shut the shit down. Here we go, the Lord. Why here we go? Yate, we invite you to join us for Indigenous Action, a podcast where we dig deep into critical issues impacting our communities in the occupied lands known as the so-called United States or what many people recognize as Turtle Island. This is an autonomous, anti-colonial broadcast with unapologetic and claws-out analysis towards total liberation. So take your seat by this fire and may the bridges we burn together light our way. Find us at indigenousaction.org and with the Channel Zero Network. So I wonder if you could speak about how autonomous infrastructure can actually be. Like you mentioned squats in Italy that are hosting hosting instances and connected to no blogs. Or I know of a radio station, comrades of ours that in uh, Athens, that have a squatted radio station that's been running for Mm-hmm. I think two decades probably, and stealing electric or I'm sorry, resocializing electricity. <laughs> They're very particular about that. Like that, that is so autonomous. When when you're you know you're not paying the state regulators for the electricity that you're using, and you you don't own the building that you're in. You're taking it mm-hmm. from a public institution, and the airwaves. 
literally as a pirate station. There, there are like limitations in different places around the legality of that sort of activity. Like in Berlin, uh, friends of ours have have to- told stories about how you can't really operate a pirate radio station for very long without a bunch of you know police coming in with with guns drawn and raiding the space to take the transmitter. Yeah, and and there's still lots of pirate radio stations that keep popping up in Berlin, even 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 well, in that's that. Awesome. Yeah. But so I wonder with like with the way that web hosting works, like when we talked about the Gab instant uh, <laughs> instance moment, the moment of like Gab mm-hmm. f- being forced to be withdrawn from these different platforms that allowed them to to pass their information along, including infrastructure like what Cloudflare, mm-hmm. uh, for instance, uh, you know, stopping DDoS attacks. How autonomous? can these instances actually be? Is that is that like a useful question? Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, the, in something like Gab, Gab is trying to do a, they were trying to build a a large platform size. Centralized. Th- cent- they were basically trying to use decentralized infrastructure to build a centralized place on top of. So the dynamics are a bit, you know, like, the the one of the interesting things about the Fediverse is you can build a server like for instance for myself I run a server that's just for me and I'm the only user on that server I make my own code of conduct uh, every time I write something in my head because it's just me deciding you know what I think is appropriate and and morally righteous and yeah there's no there's no other admin deciding what I can say. Though everyone following me gets to decide whether they want to interact with me and my server or not. And yeah, that that ability, you know, someone using the same software can then make one for themselves and also invite all of their friends and have one that has 10 people on it or 100 people or 1,000 people or you know, their servers with, I think the biggest server on, on the Fediverse has uh, 700,000 people on it. Uh, it's one out of uh, out of Japan called Pawu. Pawu.net um, is the biggest, <laughs> is this, this Japanese server that's uh, been around for a really long time. And actually, it's all in Japanese, so the rest of the Fediverse, they almost exist like a, a tiny centralized platform because their users are all writing in Japanese and it's the biggest congregation of Japanese users um, on the Fediverse and yeah most of the rest of the Fediverse doesn't speak Japanese so they're mostly just talking with themselves but you know every now and then like I'll make make a post that suddenly like blows up on Pau and has like hundreds of Japanese people talking about it and that post sort of exists over in that world openly so there's a lot of inter- very interesting dynamics that that exist in this space that sort of have never been really explored before, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things to uh, to try and to sort of experiment with. Does Mastodon do you do you feel like Mastodon or or these alternative parallel like there's lots of there's lots of cho- reasons that people would choose to come on to these other social media environments, maybe because they don't like what's going on in the other ones, maybe because of the open source arguments or what kind of data is getting collected, what have you, or um, what kind of stuff's getting shoved in their face from the platform. Like how many times can you be asked if you want to follow Elon Musk? Right. But does does shifting over to these platforms sort of create a siloing effect where we, or is there a danger, do you think there, where uh, we just sort of go into an environment where we're just hearing from people that are similar to ourselves and not really getting in touch with newer ideas from that. Cause I know like we, for instance, I don't like going on Facebook. I'll do a post on Facebook every you know week that we have an episode for the show in hopes that someone will find the content and then start engaging with it on, on their own separately. But it seems like a, a, an opportunity for overlap where people are going to first try the things that are most available to them and then maybe explore out from there. I sort of want to say that e- that kind of siloing is is happening already everywhere. You know, like, if you have an Instagram account and you're posting your events to your Instagram account, like, if you're posting punk shows to, an, to a small Instagram account, you, you're not going to get, 
like Instagram will limit the fuck out of you and you're not actually getting like this global audience that you think you are unless you pay to promote each post that you make at this point. Uh, you know, I guess you have the, the potential to like have your post go viral randomly if like the right person interacts with it. But in general, I would say anyone who's not not trying to be a sort of social media influencer doesn't actually have that much visibility and is sort of by default siloed to just the people who have explicitly gone out of their way to find them on mainstream social media. And so in this new dynamic or in 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 the Fediverse, you know, you, there, there only is people sort of explicitly finding you or finding you through through a chain of friends posting something or friends of friends posting something in this natural way as opposed to the kind of algorithmic boosting of of content that you can sort of play with in the Instagrams and Twitters of the world. I, I don't I don't know if you you followed that point or if that made sense, but one instance or one sort of when you said punk show, it made me think of this the conversation that happened on from Ember's a couple of months ago, which is another um, podcast that I listen to and that are friends in the Channel Zero network. And the person that was the guest hosts an instance for their small anarchist and punk community mm -hmm. in the city that they live in. Mm -hmm. And I like the way that they explained what they were expecting to get out of it as a, like an, they're, you know, they create this instance, a server, they allow friends that they know to sign up to it. They assume that all the interactions are going to be transparent to the rest of the internet but as you said with an instagram post about a punk show you, you may get to some of the people that are on instagram and that are in your community or whatever but but there's a place suddenly this like micro blog opportunity for anyone on the internet to just say i'm in blank city i wonder what punk stuff is going on i'm going to find this publicly available rss feed coming off of that instance that says when the upcoming punk shows that they mm -hmm. want everyone to know about is and it's a weird it like approaching it in this way makes a lot of sense in some ways it's also a kind of weird we've gone back to the time when people just ran websites for their scenes mm -hmm. sort of like gone through the needle like the eye of the needle and back through the other side yeah um, i mean that's a great way of looking cool. at at the fediverse is is that exactly it's it's the self-hosted indie website but with the dynamics that we expect in in the modern space of sort of more levels of interaction. And it, it seems like that's a thing that a lot of blogging sites have always had is this element of it's not just about you as the poster, but there's ways to interact with other posters on that same platform. Like with no blogs, we can like chat with or follow or friend other people. We can send private messages through encrypted email through the servers to another user that uses that same email. But it's not a thing I ever think to use. But I think because Mastodon is such a flashy and like f friendly and welcoming mm -hmm. platform that it makes me feel like, uh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll interact with this like it's Instagram or like it's Twitter or whatever else. I can message people. I can private message people, whatever else. I don't know. It's pretty cool. So with this surge of, and I guess it kind of leans into the next question, like with the surge of new users to Mastodon that you mentioned and that's been written about, like PC Mag has a big article mm -hmm. about it. Um, since the, Musk's, the, the, the recent one, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since, like, with Ma Musk's announcement of purchasing mm -hmm. Twitter shares, um, this seems to happen, actually, frequently uh, when major corporate platforms are involved you know, in the news cycle, like yeah. when um, Crime Think and Instagram, or Crime Think and It's Going Down, excuse me, IGD, uh, were kicked off of Facebook a few years back, yep. alongside a lot of other anti-fascist sites. A bunch of people, like, migrated to some degree over to Mastodon or to other social medias. But in a lot of these cases, people will be there, and then they'll sort of cycle back. They'll sort of, like, put their account on Hibernate for a little bit, try the other thing and then when it doesn't hit the same part of their brain they may move back do you do you have any th ideas about what maybe some keys to keeping people wanting to stay with this alternative honestly i think a lot of that is there's no uh, there's no addiction mechanisms built in to keep you you log in and maybe everyone's just talking about like what they ate for breakfast and there's no exciting drama that is like being shoved in your face and you're like oh this is boring everyone's just like 
talking about eggs right now. Like what? There's what? no dog piles. Yeah. And drama, like drama and news and horror are, are really addictive. And so, you know, there's, there's a, there's an intrinsic reason right there why people go back to this thing that they hate because it has, <laughs> has these mechanisms built in that keep them hooked. And yeah, the Fediverse doesn't have that. And so unless you're actively like actively deciding what kind of people you're interacting with and sort of taking an active role in that uh, sort of gardening, yeah, you you might just drop off. And I think that's I think that's okay. I think that's actually fine. I think that it probably makes the kinds of interactions that end up happening on the Fediverse a lot nicer too, because um, the people who are there are there because they want to be there, not because they got a notification that, I don't know, some celebrity just punched some other celebrity on their, <laughs> on their phone or whatever. Getting involved in technical projects often takes a sharp learning curve. Can you talk a little bit about tr- troubleshooting in community and um, creating instances and how to get assistance if someone decides that they they want to set up a peer tube or they want to, like I've been messing with Castapod a little bit and have had a lot of difficulty, but partially that's um, my lack of access to French. Uh, and a lot of the developers um, are are based in France, as, as far as I can tell. If if someone has a project in mind, like where should they? Where's a good place for them to look for support in getting started? I mean, I I would say technical support wise, if you just start asking questions into the void of the Fediverse, like there's a lot of very very smart people who are very excited to answer technical questions. It takes a little bit, you know, you sort of need to get some, have somewhat of a following to get responses. Um, but I would say, you know, as a, as someone new on the Fediverse, it's a pretty open space. And if you just start talking to people, people want to help. And, you know, even the, the main developers, in in that sense, I think you just have to be a little bit fearless to just be okay with asking, asking basic questions, you know, that not being afraid that you're looking like a looking like a noob and just uh just ask you know go go ask the go ask the person who wrote the software directly publicly and say hey like i can't figure this out will you help and if they're like i'm too busy i think that if you ask sort of ask the void a little bit more um you will get a good amount of response. There's also there's also a ton of um, uh, matrix rooms for all the different projects that are filled with people who want to help each other figure this out. And there's there's a ton of different groups that are like, we offer yeah, we're trying to do this or we're trying to help with this, and that's pretty pretty active. You mentioned Matrix. I was going to ask about outside of the Fediverse, which is pretty big, if you could name some other interesting parallel infrastructure. And Matrix, if I understand, is like an encrypt- end-to-end encrypted uh, sort of uh, version of Discord that's open source. Is that a fair way to describe it? I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't liken it to Discord that much, but that's, I have heard people say that. Yeah, Matrix, Matrix is an interesting project, and it still has a ways to go before it's really honestly ready for prime time <laughs> but it's it's usable it's usable now i have i have a lot of mixed feelings about about matrix right now that i i won't go into but i i'm excited for for following the development of, of matrix and there's a there's a bunch of communities that are using it as their main sort of communication uh channels um right now and there's a lot of really really smart interesting people working on getting getting matrix up to par for being sort of the more live it's it's a very similar kind of project to the fediverse um with a few differing goals i think they're sort of trying to appeal to corporations and corporate backing a bit more than a lot of other sort of open source c projects they've gotten some vc money and like the german and french and i think german french and 
English, like, militaries have all uh, agreed to start using Matrix as their chat platforms into the future, which, you know, in some ways looks good for Matrix because it's like, oh, our security is uh, strong enough that we have governments wanting to use it, but it also makes a lot of a lot of people really uncomfortable when they're like really releasing a press release that they just like signed a contract with the f- you know German army or whatever German military or the French military or other very interesting projects that I've been following for a long time that are of un- in similar nature a secure scuttlebutt uh, secure scuttlebutt is is very similar in goal to the Fediverse though a bit more utopian and a, a ways further off in uh, sort of the ability for it being a non-tech thing. I mean, there there's, there are people who who are not super technically minded using it, but there's there's a there's a a hill to climb um, for a number of reasons. But the the project is um, is very awesome, and it's it's being done by. Uh, by a, a lot of really great people. Uh, what your question was just related social projects or what? Well, not even social. Yeah, I guess social in in terms of like the aims and goals of the production of it, but but just um, other alternative parallel infrastructure that you you you're interested in or you think people might find kind of cool to check out on their own. Yeah, I think Delta Chat is another one that is I think mostly being created by. Uh, by anarchists and has a it's also a, a chat platform built on top of the email standard or not chat platform but a, a chat sort of protocol s- server thing built on top of email um, so you can use your already existing email ability and there's like a layer on top of that that then you can uh, chat with using this open standard but and it's also um Encrypted, so it's it's similar in um, similar in security standards to to something like Signal, and then also there's the sort of the world of XMPP and Jabber uh, or XMPP or Jabber are both the same thing. There's a good amount of activity in that space, and that's sort of one of the oldest and sort of original federated chat protocols and. It has somewhat failed a number of times through uh, many takeover takeover attempts by different corporations, but uh, it's another um, standard that there's a lot of people who are very excited about, and there's been some renewed activity in that space in the last two years or so. That's um, pretty interesting to follow, and yeah, if you're if you're or if you're more a secure ops-minded person, uh, yeah, it's worth looking into um, into using uh, XMPP. Cool. I didn't have any more questions. Uh, Wake us. Is there any other topics that you wanted to talk about? I may reach out to um, some folks that I know that are working in Collectiva too, and just see if they have any. Oh yeah, yeah. Collectiva is an awesome, awesome project, and I'm I'm really excited to to see uh, that that uh continue to grow um yeah i guess shouting out some some instances that are doing really cool stuff um yeah uh, what do they do i mean they seem to have their hands in a couple of different things right yeah yeah no they're they're doing great stuff um another instance in the fediverse that i who's continually been doing really awesome stuff is um post.lurk yeah post.lurk.org They've been doing really cool stuff. Uh, social co-op, uh, social dot co-op, is another really good instance that's uh, cooperatively run. Merve dot social um, uh, is a very a small community of really incredible artists. Um, that's that's invite only, and there's a lot of really inspiring people working on stuff there. They've they've attracted a lot of. Um, interest into the Fediverse just by being like a bunch of weirdos doing really awesome stuff um yeah there's the there's the like Mastodon instance that Collectiva's operating but I think they're also doing a um 
like since member projects such as Submedia have had difficulties in the past with keeping their stuff up on YouTube, mm-hmm. I guess yeah, they, they have a peer tube instance, they, right? Collective has a has a uh, peer tube instance as well. So I guess if you're involved in like a media project, you could look at either creating a like we we don't have any sort of hosting anywhere. We have a um, a Mastodon um, account on chaos.social where we post our content and there's usually not very much more than that but I guess if you're approaching well, what is, this as like what a is media your, mm, sorry, what is your Mastodon account if you want to just shout it out just for, yeah. Uh, yeah, for it's, your, um, your Fediverse account yeah the final straw radio um, chaos. chaos.social let me see if I can actually bring the it, I'm still not used to vocalizing the the address in the way that like a Twitter profile gets vocalized yeah um, so you, that's that's just just the, the learning curve of of uh figuring out how to say and talk about these things is is interesting um it's a uh, chaos.social it's at the final straw radio on there so the yeah the other way around so at the final straw radio at chaos.social uh, is your is your user, username yeah what what about yours what's the instance if people want to find your work uh, that you uh, host my my instance is liaison or my my account is liaison l i a i z o n at wake w a k e dot s t. That's just on my my own instance of one. <laughs> your, your little island. Well, yeah. Thanks a lot for for taking the time to have this this conversation. Um, I, I really appreciate it, and I yeah appreciate all that you had to share. So thanks. Cool. Th- yeah. Thank you so much for for reaching out, and uh, it was great talking to you. Yeah. You too. If you would like to support The Final Straw, you can subscribe to our podcast via various platforms, follow and share our materials online, as well as give us feedback via the links at tohsr.wtf slash tree, as in link tree. To support our transcription work and wider project, you can subscribe to us via patreon.com slash tfsr. You can also buy some merch or find donation methods at tfsr.wtf slash support. And now some words from Anarchist Prisoner Sean Swain. As a continuation of the tradition by Sean Swain of reading the names of people killed by police in the so-called USA, I'll be reading for the month of August 2021. August 1st, Isaac Anthony Delgado, name withheld by police. Sean Christopher Fairchild, Logan Anthony Zappa, Julius Philip. August 2nd, Deborah K. Barge, Lamont Xavier Young. August 3rd, Antonio D. King, Austin William Lands, Ent Wright, Michael Tristan Paone. August 4th, Daniel Matsuchi, Dylan Christopher Harmer, Sean Rowe, Terrence Dominic Knight. William Lanham, Carl Limas, August 5th, Alaire Ronald Escobar Velasquez, Chad Matthew Fiscus, Isaiah Hines, Joseph John Howard, name withheld by police, August 6th, Hayden Charles McIlvain, Matthew Tuan Tran, Name withheld by police. Name withheld by police. Name withheld by police. Nathan Larry Parsons. Roger Peter Lynch. Zaidini Amado. August 7th. Shea No Zuniga Jr. Derek Eugene Jackson. Kevin K.J. Ray Johnson, name withheld by police. Ryan Peterson, Selena Clark Quintero, August 8th, Chance Newton, Deshaun Big Top Batiste, Zelaya Z. Johnson, Jeremiah Brown, name withheld by police. Randall Boyd Burton, Thomas Tommy Michael Fallon, August 9th, Christopher Robinson, Marcus Martin, 
Marvin Richard Hitchcock Jr. Name withheld by police. Luis Manuel Garcia Arias. Randall Lee Tinsley. Stephen Ray Bailey. Donald Williams. August 10th. Johan Alexis Salazar. Name withheld by police. Christian Allen Lee Warren. James Jim Robert Wisner Sr. August 11th. Brooks Hacker. Elia S. Laley. Sasha Marie Hudtwelker Gray. Adrian Joel Sanchez. Daniel Turney Crowley. Felicia Putney. Name withheld by police. Name withheld by police. Rodney Coleman. August 12th. Brendan T. Galbreath. Gordon Moss. Name withheld by police. Name withheld by police. Ronald Steve Garcia Alarcon. William Guy Sellers. August 13th. Mauricio Luna. Name withheld by police. Stephen D. Prim, a.k.a. Stephen Dean. August 14th. John A. Vogel. Kyle Anthony Goydesik. Name withheld by police. Stephanie Olympia Girardi. Robert D. Bailey. August 15th. Caitlin Lee Harris. Eric Padilla. Name withheld by police. Name withheld by police. Philip John Walden. August 16th. Antonio Jackson. Broderick Baldy E. Shelton Jr. Jeffrey Jeff Dwayne Smith. Brianna Lynn Foster. Eliana Lee Gaddis. Isabella Lee Gaddis. Alex Domina. August 17th. Destiny Thompson. Name withheld by police. August 18th. Devante Dwayne Brown. Irvin Olikong. James Metallis Smith. Kevin Eugene Norris, Kyle Wade Plunkett, Lucas Antonio Salas, Ronald Ron Francis Savaglia, Terence Andre Bay, August 19th, name withheld by police, Douglas Brown Jr., Jordan Nelson, Nicholas Nico Matthew Rome Scott J. DeGraw August 20th Brandon Lee Schlitting George Michael Mireles August 21st Daryl J. Carr Jennifer Sue Shirley Juan Luis Alvera Preciado Shannon Trevor McKinley Pieta Lamonte Jones, August 22nd, Manjot Singh Tind, Tyrone Christiamar Lam, August 23rd, Name withheld by police, Trinidad Mary, August 24th, Jamar Jason Taylor, John Eberts, Name withheld by police. Name withheld by police. Paul Finn Rasmussen. Tory Brown. August 25th. Antoine Gilmore. Cordell Jackson. Daniel Garcia. Erica Denise Lopez. Jonathan Daniel Mancia. Kenneth Fassell, Kevin Victor Johnston, 
Natalia Stallworth, Robert Anderson, Rodney Barton, Ryan Kaufman, Taylor Jeffrey Johnson, August 26th, Earl D. Lawhorn III, Samuel Kirk, Vladislav Fomin, August 27th, Alexander Tadros, Brandon Ventura, Christopher Corey Moore, David G. Wandel, Lanell Cephas, Zaqua Radel Maxson, Fanta Billity, August 28th, Ingmar von Strandberg, Name Withheld by Police, August 29th, Gray Kennerly Bell, Johnny Lee Perry II, Kevin Cortez, Michael Rosado, Jorge Curry Alberto Perez, Albert A.J. Perez, Emilian Tremond Hauf, August 30th, Brittany Maldrew, Etiana Planeas, Martin Captain Fu Luther, Paris Wilder, Ronald J. Reiner, August 31st, Adalberto Hernandez Cereijo, Elena Chacon Diaz, George Watson, Jeremy Michael Berg, Karina Diaz, name withheld by police, Robert Nelson. You can still write Sean at his new old new again address at Sean Swain number A two four three two zero five OSP Youngstown eight seven eight Coitsville Hubbard Road Youngstown Ohio four four five zero five. You can find his past writings, updates on his case, hear his past audio, find out how to get his books, plus ways to contribute to his legal defense fund at seanswain dot org. You can cash app dollar sign Swainiac 1969 or send Dota us and comment that it's for Swain's defense. More info is also available on Instagram at at Swainiac 1969 or Twitter at at Swain Rocks. This is The Final Straw. The show will later be archived at thefinalstrawradio.noblogs.org and you can email us with questions and suggestions at thefinalstrawradio at riseup.net or thefinalstrawradio at protonmail.com. If you'd like to use any episode for your project or radio show, feel free to do so. Just send us an email to let us know. If you care to, you can send us letters at The Final Straw Radio, P.O. Box 6004, Asheville, North Carolina, 28816. This show is brought to you by Firestorm Books and Coffee. Located at 610 Haywood Road, Firestorm Books and Coffee is a worker-owned co-op in Asheville specializing in offbeat, underground, and independent literature. You can find a catalog of Firestorm's books and zines, plus a full calendar of events up at their website, firestorm.coop.